All right, baby. Oh, baby, game on, baby. Welcome to Miami Mike's. It's week three here at Miami Mike's, the Miami Mike Sports Show. And it's week three of the NFL. It's pretty amazing that the time is flying here as we get through another football season. But we're going to recap a little bit about yesterday's NFL. Yesterday, we saw Tom Brady. That's right. Tom Terrific do something that he has never done before. Throw four interceptions. That's right. Four interceptions. He threw four all last year, and he threw four against the Bills. As no one circles the wagon like the Buffalo Bills, who are now 3-0, who lead the AFC East and are for real. This team came back in two weeks by large margins in the second half and won with a quarterback from Harvard, Ryan Fitzpatrick. That's right. Let's talk about our three local teams, the Miami Dolphins, the New York Jets, and the Giants here at Miami Mike's. Yesterday, I must say, I had a good feeling about the Dolphin game. I thought we'd come out with a W on the road since we are road warriors. But once again, coaching let us down. With 44 seconds left, we couldn't get 10 yards to attempt a field goal for the win on the road. So my, my Miami Dolphins are now 0-3 and in the bottom of the AFC East. It hurts, Coach Sperano. It hurts, just so you know. And how about yesterday's J-E-T-S Jets, 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 not a good day, not a good day. Mark Sanchez uh, struggled a little bit, and of course, uh, Antonio Cromartie's fumble on the kickoff, which put the Raiders up by two possessions, did not help the Jets' cause. They played hard and, and battled back, but just didn't have enough time or enough points to get it done. So the Jets finally hit the loss column this year, and uh, we'll see how it goes from here. Um, we got to talk about the blue. How about the big blue? New York Giants yesterday, huh? How about the Giants? What a win yesterday for the Giants on the road in Philadelphia. It was an amazing comeback, an amazing win for the Giants. And uh, Eli Manning tossing four touchdown passes to a guy called Vic Cruz. I believe we have a Vic Lunatic Cruz here at Miami Mike's, but it's not the real Vic Cruz of the Giants. And he did a great job yesterday, Vic Cruz. And... To hear that uh, Michael Vick is out with injury, his hand is not broken, but it is, it is damaged, and he may be out two to three weeks. Knowing the Michael Vick, he may be back this week, but stay tuned for that. Let's welcome here tonight Stephen Baker, the touchdown maker. <laughs> welcome, pal. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to have you. Nice to have you. Let's talk a little bit about you right now, Baker. What have you been doing since football ended for you? What, what's been going on with some of your hobbies and uh, you're coaching again? Yes, actually I coach uh, high school track and field at Perth Amboy High School. Down South Jersey? Uh, yes, in Middlesex County. Nice, and nice. I've been doing that for about 15 years now. Excellent, excellent. And uh, let's see, you were a third round pick from the New York Giants. You were the 83rd pick overall. There was a little controversy with the pick. The Cowboys had to pick right before the Giants, is that correct? Right, and I grew up in Texas. I was born in Texas, so I always wanted to play for the Cowboys. And I got so close to being a Cowboy, but not quite. So when the Giants picked me, you know, I still had a little ill feelings because I wanted to be a Cowboy, but you know what? As soon as I got drafted by the Giants, now I can't stand the Cowboys. Sorry, Cowboy fans. Oh, that's okay. That's, how, that's what happens when you get drafted. The rivalries begin, and with the Giants, it was always the Cowboys, the Redskins, and the Eagles. And the division, and always in the playoffs, the 49ers. Yes. Those teams, there, there were some great battles back then. Thank you. Um, let, let, let's see, you spent six seasons with the Giants. Your longest reception was an 85-yard reception. Do you recall the play? Do you recall who was against it? Did you score a touchdown? Absolutely. It was against the New Orleans Saints. And it was 85-yard uh, touchdown reception? Yes. Did you uh, catch it a few yards and run with it? or how, Yeah, I, what, caught what it went at, on? I caught it at 50 yards, and then I had to throw a move after I caught it and run the remaining 50 yards. And that was a game where we went into, the, into New Orleans very banged up. And okay. we had a lot, of, it was called the misfit game because everybody, with replacement players were in there. And to do that on a Thursday night, I believe it was, was Excellent. probably one of the highlights of my career to go 85 yards on national TV. Yeah, prime time, prime oh, yes. time, prime time. But how about, how did you get it started? So when you, you, were born in Ray, you were born in San Antonio, you moved to Los Angeles, California, yes. that's correct. Yes. You attended college at Fresno State University, which is in Northern California. Yes. They were always a passing team. I remember them back in the day. They used to throw the ball quite a bit. So you went to Fresno. Did you stay all four years at Fresno State? No, actually I was a junior college transfer. Okay. So I went to a junior college first, and while I was there, that's how I got my nickname, the touchdown maker, because I scored... 
31 touchdowns in two seasons. And junior college. In junior college. And I believe that ties a record with, if I'm not mistaken, O.J. Simpson? Yes, and that's the only thing we have in common. That you two share the junior college touchdown record of 30. Well, yeah. thank God you're here and not yes, over there. Okay? Absolutely. But uh, 31 touchdowns in junior college, that's amazing. Then you went on to Fresno State, yes, right? Yes, and that's where I, I continued. I, I became a great punt returner. Okay. And um, I think I scored like 16 touchdowns in two years, I believe, there. That, that's great. Fresno State was uh, the Bulldogs up in the Northern California, okay? Yes. And then you got drafted in the third round, 83rd overall by the Giants. Pretty amazing. Um, what do you think about yesterday's, uh, yesterday's game with the current Giant team? What, do, yeah, what are your feelings on the Giants right now? I tell right you, now? I was really looking forward to that game because that's a game that I would call a step-up game for a receiver. Somebody has to step up. Vic and Cruz was, did that yesterday. I was so happy to see that because I had a similar situation when I had a game like that and they're looking for you to step up, and he did. And he made very good moves, like veteran moves, like right. catching the ball and looking up the field. He was looking to make plays before he caught the ball, which is a no-no until you get better in the league. Right. But he really made some big plays yesterday, and I was so proud. And he didn't step out of bounds. You know, he caught the ball a couple of times on the sidelines. Most receivers, now they catch it, they're stepping out of bounds. You know what? That's because he's hungry. He, step up. You said exactly. it. He stepped it up, and he made big plays. He wants to stay up with, with the big boys. And he played well last year in preseason and made the practice squad absolutely. team. So the hard work pays off. And for Vic Cruz yesterday, it was very exciting to see him be successful. Against the Philadelphia team on the road with Michael Vick, nobody, nobody expected the Giants to win yesterday. I did. You I know? always pick them to win. and I, you know, like Did I said, you really bake I on the swear, road with Michael I, Vick and the Dream Team? I swear to God, because I knew somebody had to step up, and I'm sure Coach Tom preached that all week. You went to Super Bowl 25 with the Giants against the Buffalo Bills. Yes. And, I, I, and I'm telling everybody right now, nobody right now is circling the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> but in Super Bowl 25, that was one of the best Super Bowls that I've ever watched. A wide right for the Bills. You were part of that giant team that won that Super Bowl. You had two receptions in the game. You also scored a touchdown yes. in the game. Uh, tell us about your Super Bowl experience. How, how was the whole, you know, that was an emotional game too. Yes. And uh, tell us about your experience with that. Well, that Super Bowl, as you well know, the war was going on. That's correct. And yep. And they, Whitney Houston, I believe, sang the national anthem. Oh, God. One of the best renditions Unbelievable, ever. right? And I started everyone, crying. I did too. I looked did, around. Right? Yes, I, I looked, started crying at the uh, Miami Mikes. I, I couldn't believe to, it. I had to look around and see if some of the big guys were crying. And I remember William Roberts, who's like 6'6". Humongous William yes. Roberts. Used to come to my store and see caucus yeah. all the time. He shed a tear and then I was like, okay, it's okay to cry now. But when those F-16s flew over and then they showed the troops over in their um, in the um, trenches. It was amazing. The game should still go on, and that's when I tell you it was one of the most exciting experiences ever. That was a great game, and let's talk a little bit about that game because yeah. we were going back and forth, and the Giants had the lead late in the fourth, and then Buffalo on the final possession they were getting chunks on your defense. What was going through your mind on your sideline? Because they just needed a field goal yes. to win that Super Bowl. Okay, and by the way. Show the camera. Uh, there it is. <laughs> Super Bowl 25 ring right there. Okay? If it was never wide right, Stephen Baker would not be wearing that Super Bowl ring. But he did it. So and, and what was your feelings on the sideline when, when Thurman Thomas was getting 10 and 15 yards at a clip at that, that four, late in the fourth quarter? I thought it was over. Yeah, and I have to tell you, Mike, I was so nervous because my touchdown before the half wouldn't have meant anything if they go down here and kick this winning field goal. And the defense we were playing, we were only rushing two people. And keeping everybody else back. But yes. there was, for some reason, they were finding lanes. openings, yes. lanes, and they were getting through them. And I, it was, I'll and tell you, it was very stressful. Yeah, Big, and, and I was I, a nervous wreck. I could picture you and the crew on oh. the sideline. I mean, you had Lawrence Taylor. You had your primetime defense in yes. there, too. It wasn't like, you know, these were just regular Giants. You had the A-team. You had Taylor in there. Right. You had all of them running the... Carson's, all of them, it was amazing. And they were just eating up chunks. Eating and up I chunks of yards. Getting closer and closer, and I'm still getting butterflies now just thinking about it because right? that kick, when he got to within field goal range and he spiked the ball and it's like three seconds left. Now, this is it. it, it it's make said, or break it. now. Three seconds. Yeah. They left us with no time on the clock for the yeah. Giants. If, we, if there was any, if anything, this, this would have been a, a very, very miserable way to lose Super Bowl 25. Absolutely. I mean, so you I, go ahead. No, I was saying I couldn't even look at it. I turned my back to the um, the field and just watched the crowd. And, and, and you know yes. when you saw the Giants. Well, everybody wore blue because the Giants were blue and the Bills had blue on also. So I'll tell you what. 
that that Super Bowl, I'll never forget when it went wide right. I was rolling on the carpet. I was jumping up and down, and I was so excited for the Giants and all their fans at that no, time. And, thank uh, you. And, and and what about when the game ended? Okay, wide right, and everybody was celebrating. You know, because of your emotions of being, oh my God, we're not going to win this game. To we are the Super Bowl champions of Super Bowl 25. Right. Like, how was it? I mean, well, what was went on in the locker room? It was a, a constant celebration for about 45 minutes, and it's never been like that ever and throughout my whole six-year career. I've never experienced that again. Because that's and, it. Yeah, and I have to sound corny here, but after we won that Super Bowl, all I could hear was Rocky, the theme from the Rocky. The theme from Rocky. Yeah. Why, was that a song they were playing or something? No, that, yeah? that was a song that was dear to me because nobody gave us a chance like okay. they did Rocky in the first movie. Excellent. And Excellent. when we won it, you can actually hear me say that when the guy interviewed me right afterwards. I was like, this is like a Rocky moment for me right now. Yeah, that's pretty and, amazing, right? Yes, it was the most amazing experience of my life. And every time they showed on um, uh, the NFL Network channel, it's a, I still uh, get chilled. Oh. And I want to thank you oh, you're for welcome. making us feel so welcome here oh, as well. It's and my, your staff, it's my they do a great job. It's my pleasure. Let's not forget Mike. our good friend Nick Jabez, too, for the NFL oh, Rhyme Wheels. kidding me? When he told me that right? he used to be me when he was a kid. That's amazing. That He, yeah. he idled you. Right, because I used to do yeah. that to Drew Pearson and Lynn Swan. Right. And, and I did it to Dan Marino all the time. Well, basically, I did it when I was younger to Joe Namath. Oh, okay. They compared me to Joe Namath back in high school. Wow. And, and then as I grew older, it was Dan Marino. Yeah. So now, I'm, I'm Now we're excited. both big fans of Nick Javis. And now we both you, enjoy Nick and his show. And, and we really appreciate you being on our show tonight. Okay, uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, thank Stephen you, Baker, the touchdown maker. <laughs> so let's see some of the questions for this week. Okay. The first one is from Vic Cruz and not the Vic Cruz of the New York Giants. <laughs> <laughs> the Vic Cruz of the Miami Mike's Facebook. Super Bowl predictions. Right now, my Super Bowl prediction is going to be the Green Bay Packers and the New England Patriots, even though they lost to the Bills. That's my prediction right at this time today. It could change. Check in a couple weeks on the Miami Mike Sports Show. What do you, who, Jessica, who do you like? What is your prediction? I'm an Eagles fan, so I'm a little bitter right now okay. after yesterday. But, All right. Uh, so you think the Eagles are still going to make the Super Bowl? Um, I'm hoping. Okay. Fingers crossed. <laughs> we'll see how it goes with or without Michael Vick. So good luck to you, Eagles. Thanks. This is from David in Pennsylvania. Do you think, the, do you think Pittsburgh gets back-to-back -back Super Bowls, or will the Dolphins do so? Well, I believe that Pittsburgh has a much better shot than the Miami Dolphins of winning any yeah. Super Bowl at this time. And my deal is that the Dolphins are far far, far away from Super Bowl Sunday. And if that would ever happen, boy, what a party we're going to have. You know what I'm saying, Jessica? <laughs> okay, we got Ryan from the Philippines. All the way from the Philippines, Ryan. <laughs> Who do you think would win the Pacquiao-Mayweather fight? And that's a great question. I'm hoping that they get this fight done soon. I know Pacquiao has a big fight coming up on November 12th. But when it comes to Pacquiao Mayweather, I'm going to stay with the Filipino, and I think Pacquiao is the better fighter. Do you follow boxing at all? I don't. Game off to that, eh? <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, all right. This is from Gerard, from Livingston. With only a few games left. Okay, what do you think the chances of the Red Sox holding on for the wild card spot? Well, I'm actually pulling for the Red Sox, and as I, as, Right now, the Rays are losing, and uh, I, I'm pulling for the Red Sox to get in. It's always good to have a Red Sox-Yankee rivalry if they both win in the first round. So I believe the Red Sox are going to hold on, even though they've been struggling in the second half of the baseball season. And what are the chances of the uh, New England Patriots winning the Super Bowl? I think the chances of the New England Patriots winning the Super Bowl are very good, even though the Buffalo Bills took care of business yesterday. This question is from Wayne. Okay, Wayne wants to know, with Miami Mike's being such a great Dolphins bar, how is it dealing with all the other fans here at Miami Mike's? Well, I want to say this much. Miami Mike's is a huge Dolphin bar, but we also cater to all the NFL teams here in high definition and stereo sound. We always have the big games of the week on the big screens, and everybody enjoys it here at Miami Mike's. So once again, we cater to all NFL teams, and we make everybody happy at Miami Mike's, not just the Dolphin fans. Game on. 
Okay, once again, Sal, who will win the Super Bowl? Well, I think that the Packers are going to repeat this year. I think the NFC is very strong. So I'm pulling for the 3-0 Packers, who have a great young quarterback. And it just goes to show when you have a great general manager and you let a quarterback like Brett Favre go for a young guy like Aaron Rodgers, it works. Good GM builds a winner. Game on. Okay, final question of the night. From Rich in Fairlawn, do you, think bring, do you think bringing Reggie Bush to the Dolphins was a mistake? Well, I don't want to say it's a mistake. I just don't think they're utilizing him right now in the right way. Once they get him out in the slot, set him in motion, do a couple screens with him, I think we're going to get off of the losing ways and they're going to start winning. So once again, I know we got a young running back in Thompson and we needed to bring in Reggie Bush. I think Reggie just has to step it up and the offensive coordinator needs to use Reggie Bush better than just trying to run him up inside the tackles. He's not a tackle runner. He's outside the tackles, sweeps, screens, dump offs, get it done Dolphins with Reggie Bush. <laughs> we have time for another one or two? All right, let's keep going. Come on, we got two more questions. All right. Okay, Randy from Clifton. Do you have a special place for the Giants after they beat the undefeated Patriots in the Super Bowl? Most definitely. I'll never forget when the Giants beat the New England Patriots in the Super Bowl. The Dolphins 72 team was the only undefeated team because of that game. But the excitement of that game with Plax getting the touchdown pass from Eli late in the game with about a minute left was phenomenal. The Giants always have a special place in my heart from when I was a kid growing up. My dad was a Giants fan, my family's Giant fans, my brother and I are huge Dolphin fans, but the Giants will always have a place in my heart, whether they win any more Super Bowls or not. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here at Miami Mike's. Get ready for week four next week of the NFL for the Miami Mike Show. Thank you all, and good night, everybody. Howdy, y'all, it's me. I had to wear a disguise after last week's show for the Giants. It's down here in Texas, <laughs> it's Monday night, and there ain't nothing but cowboys and redskins. Even though I'm incognito, I'm still on every single game like a dirt free throw. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam. And Fitzpatrick making the pat sick. Johnson, Jones, and Jackson would rally them back in. Down 21, catching the pats, relaxing. And yet another comeback win as we clear three weeks, first place in the AFC East. Thundercats with clashes, the clouds are drained. Who can't stand the rain? Is it Campbell Blaine?